Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Carolyn Kilstra, the Editor-in-Chief of Self Magazine, and it's my absolute pleasure to be here today with the amazing Camilla Alves McConaughey. She is a mother, a lifestyle expert, and an entrepreneur. She's the co-owner of the frozen organic baby food brand, Yummy Spoonfuls, and in 2015, she launched the lifestyle and community website, Women of Today, which I'm really excited to talk to her about. Camilla, thank you so much for being here with me today. It's so great to yeah. see you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. And I'm, you know, it's, you got, you got a, um, an amazing job. I'm a fan that you're able to, I mean, it's a lot of balancing balls and doing everything. I mean, I, I kind of want to hear all from you. Like, how are you doing this? Um, well, that's this actually going to be my first question for you. I wanted to say, like, it is chaos right now, isn't it? Like, we are just in such a bizarre world at the moment, aren't we? Um, how yes. have you been, how have you been, Handling it. <laughs> you know, every time a friend asks me, how are you? How are you? I say, you know, some days better than others, some days easier than others. But, you know, it's, uh, I think we're all going through it, it's, you know, in different ways. Um, it's, um, it's just hard times. I feel like all of us, we haven't had a, a break, right? Because we went from one thing, one thing was the pandemic, and then again, we had all these extra layers of things that we don't need to go down the list. We all know where they are, one after the other on top of the other. And, you know, how those things ripple effect into everybody's lives. And, you know, and especially if you have kids, if you have family, if you're caring and taking care of, um, all the systems are changed. Everything is, you know, kind of thrown out the window. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not as much of an organized person. Um, I'm not really the organized, I'm kind of the mad scientist, but I have my systems. So my systems, you know, like I know, okay, even though somebody can walk in and go, what are you doing, Camilla? Like I don't, and, but in my head, I'm like, nope, this is the system. I see it, right? And none of that, like that's gone. None of that exists anymore. Uh, you just go day by day and you try to, you know, put fires like we were talking about. You know, with somebody the other day, it's like this person is just really, you know, kind of um, uh, putting log on the fire right now, like in terms of work and doing, it's doing really great. And I said, well, you're doing that. I'm putting fires out every day. Like that's my daily um, stuff now. So it's, uh, it's you know, but like the, the main thing that I think that is very important and helps with sanity during these times, it's really um maintaining the gratitude it's really maintaining gratitude and it's, sometimes it's hard to keep that alive but it's very very important to where we're all so blessed even no matter what circumstances we can all find our blessings we can all count our blessings and doing that and helping others that really need help right now also helps kind of keep you grounded so i've been doing a lot of that um would you say that those are your, your top coping mechanisms for, for dealing with stress and, and taking care of your mental health these days? Yes. 
gratitude, 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 no matter what is happening. Do you have um, three children? Is that something that you talk to them about all the time? Yes, and sometimes it's hard for children, you know, to see. As adults, we can see, oh, yeah, you know, it could always be worse, or it could be this, or it could be that. But as kids, they, you know, I mean, for a seven-year-old to sometimes grasp that, you know, my kids understand the concept of gratitude, but when it's so much coming at the same time, um, some some days it's hard for them to go, wait, okay, no, I am grateful. And they will ha- and they have these conversations so they go, no, no, I am grateful. Like, I am blessed and grateful. I'm not saying I'm grateful, but I'm ungrateful, but it's still hard. It's still hard to go through it, right? So I think that um, staying active on helping the community uh, was something that I started in the beginning when this pandemic hit. I was like, I was so lost on trying to figure out what to do, how to help um, pe- people. And I was kind of, you know, spinning a little bit. And I, once I kind of zoning, okay, I'm doing this, I'm going to help this way, you know, which really for me was I went on this journey to help find uh, PPE, protective gear for first responders. Uh, and feed people that couldn't, you know, lost their jobs, can't get food and all of that. And and kids that, you know, we have a foundation, just keep living foundation. And we know this firsthand. A lot of the kids get their only meal from school, you know. So, like, really, we went on this mission of let me focus on getting PPE for first responders. Let me help feed people. Let me get computers and Wi-Fi to kids, you know, to the foundation did this with uh, Kevin Morris to like get computers and Wi-Fi to kids that don't have access to it right now. So once kind of I got into the path of, okay, I have a clear um, task that I need to do to help people get through this. Um, then it kind of seemed like my prop, you know, my own, whatever I was going through, you know, like kind of, it went to the back burner a little bit, you know, and that helps because you're not only focusing on what you go through. Right, totally. I, I have here some notes that um, you and your husband teamed up with Bethany Franklin's Be Strong initiative to donate 80,000 masks to healthcare workers and first responders in, in Austin and New Orleans. Well, we're, we're actually uh, almost to, I think we're almost to 400,000. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Amazing. Um, and you also donated meals to tens of thousands of kids and families in need, um, which is something that, you, you know, you've been involved with Feeding America already for several years. Um, but my understanding is I'm kind of going backwards here because I wanted to first talk about established what Women of Today is and then talk about how you actually shifted gears a little bit at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so we're going we're gonna to get to Women of Today very right after this. But I, I wanted to talk about I, I, you know, in researching in advance of this conversation, there was, I found that you had quote, scratched the plans that you had made this year for women of today to focus instead on community and, and charitable giving. And I wanted to talk to you about what made you decide to shift that focus. And, and if, you, if you have advice for other entrepreneurs and business leaders for, for thinking about direction and change in, in times like these. Yes, I think that, you know, I'm very purpose driven. I need to have a purpose. I need to, my purpose needs to be clear what it is that I'm doing, regardless of what it is, right? Like, what's my purpose? I'm, I'm very big on purpose. And I feel that everybody that has a business needs to really have their purpose clear. What is the purpose of the business? Why are you doing? How are you going to go about it, right? And that way, if your purpose is very clear, no matter what happens, you can shift, you can change, but your compass is your purpose. So you won't, your business won't get lost, right? And what happens is when your purpose is very strong, whether it is people in the community, what, like with, with women of today, whether it is your consumers or your product development and all of that, everybody get, has, a, has that compass and everybody sees it and don't get lost in the process, right? And... You know, for women of today, we were just on a, it's wild because right before the pandemic, we were like going like this, right? And um, we had all these plans. I was about to go to London. We had a whole subscription, like a whole program that we were about to start. We were in the middle of redoing, rebuilding the website completely. And, you know, the pandemic hit and it was like, I didn't have one 
you know, I was so like worried about what people were going through in the world and what the community was going through that I didn't have a lot of what I do. It's based on feel and inspiration and creativity. I didn't have any of it on me, right? Like the, the, to the website, I was just like, guys, I, 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 we sat on the homepage forever because it's like, I, I don't, I can't even give feedback. So notes on what I want to do here. And it's not even where it needs to be. We're just, you know what I mean? It was like, we have to put it out. So let's put it out, but it's not even where it needs to be and what was going to be this whole program that we had to help people uh, with their wellness journey and get better in life and all that. We had to pause, we had to stop everything. And part of it too was because it was going to be something that people were going to have to pay for it, even though the money was going to go to charity. So even though the money, everything we're trying to do with women today is very much of giving back to the community. So yes, we're going to give a, have a program that people will pay for it, but those funds were going back into the community for charity. But I paused and I was like, we can't ask. I, I don't feel okay, comfortable at, with everything going on into the world right now, telling people you have to pay for something right now. You got it. Like, you know, trying to sell a product or try. I just did not feel comfortable in my, in my gut, you know. And because we are not a product-based company, then it was okay right. to shift and change that. So in terms of, you know, what I think, Feel in terms of uh, what happened with Flamita today is that the community really appreciated that. Yeah, you know, because they were getting hit left and right by all these companies. Go, you need to buy this, you buy this, you know. And the came to women saying, "It's just like, oh, I'm just here, I'm right. just hanging out with you guys. And hey, I need to learn about this, and I need help with this. And then we we're coming up with answers and solutions for them, and sharing that with the community." So I understand that's different for us because, again, we're not a product-based company, but companies that are product-based can also find ways to integrate the purpose of instead of pushing, 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 buy, 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 how do we create that loyalty with the consumer? So I think in times like this, creating that loyalty and that bond with the consumer, I think it's what really is going to, I think that can be really helpful for a lot of companies. For sure. And I really like what you said about it's, it's mission driven, right? It's based on the passion that you have um, for what the mission is. And, and that's, that's key there for the decisions that you make about it. That it, has to, it has to ladder back up to, to your vision for what, for what the company needs to be. Um, let's talk about what Women of Today is for, for those of those in the audience who might not be familiar with it, you have a huge following. Um, it's it's a website that connects women with other women. Basically, it's it provides really excellent content um, by women for women, um, and but we have men too, and men, and men. We have men too. Yes, we do. Okay. We're actually working on a little thing with the name because you know, women are today is about inclusive. It's not about excluding anybody. And yes, we are majority women, but we also have men. We okay. have all we have all genders. We have we have everything in there. It's kind of a really beautiful thing. When we first started this, right? Um, the marketing folks said, "Well, we have to stay within one demographic, and that's right. you know, like, right. and then you target that, and it will be you know more effective, and it will grow faster. And like we can really hit it and go, and we know what we're doing." I said, "Well." I understand that, and that is a smart way to do business, guys. That is. <laughs> but again, you have to really be true to your mission and what you're trying to do. And my mission with Women Today is to create a space that everybody's included. Included. It's an inclusive place that everybody can come in. Everybody can come in and find something that they can relate with. And you know. It's slowly but surely what we're saying is that, like, you know, we just did a uh, Zoom um, event not long ago because now we can't do events in person anymore, right? Because that's, that's where we are. We had all these events lined up for us to do too. We had to cancel everything. So, you know, like, we did a Zoom and I stopped and I actually got emotional in the Zoom because I stopped and I was, you know, just scrolling down the, the screens and going like, Man, like I had, I had everybody pause, and I was like, "Guys, look at this. We have young, middle, 
older, uh, all colors, all ethnicities, people from all over the world. And I was like, that's what we're talking about, like being able to be in a place that we can all talk openly and learn from each other. You know, so it, it's it's women, but we have men as well, and we have all ages, all sizes, all uh, ethnicities. It's pretty cool, actually. It's it sounds lovely. It, so the idea, as I understand it, is that you're encouraging connection around content focused on family, food, fashion, wellness, home, and more. That's correct, and really the community, really the community is what dictates what we do. Okay. So like before the pandemic, our whole plan was, right, um, we're going to this whole education and recipes and all of it that was all like health related, right? Pandemic hits, they're like, man, we got to like, you know, we're struggling to put food on the table. Then I go, well, let me teach you how to make rice and beans and how you can make that healthier and how you can make that good, you know, and it only costs a couple bucks, you know what I mean? Like if you can feed your whole family and all this, so really the community comes to us and say they kind of let us know what they're in need of and then we try to answer that i love that what inspired you to launch the organization back in 2015 okay so a few things really was you know so i come from a story i mean you know i did modeling then for modeling i started a handbag business with my mom really it was a business for her she's been a designer fashion designer for you know for many many years we did that and you know we had a handbag company for over 10 years we did qvc i used to be on qvc and selling stuff on air and doing all of that um then i had a uh, we had our third child and that was when it really hit me of like wow like i you know and qvc you had to fly there you had to be there the whole time i was like i have to be little i had kids back to back to back and I was like, if I want to be a present mom, and I and I and I had the meanings to do that. That's important, right? Like it's different if you if you have, you know what I mean? Like you have to, you have to. It's no, it's no, you know, it is ways of making that work. But I was sitting in a situation where my husband was working really hard. We were and we we live a bit of a different life too, because it's not like we have, you know, my husband has a nine to five job. Like we we travel we leave our home we you know sometimes we're on the road for a year you know so it's like it's, a, it's so like to it's different like you know if you're if i was in my house and okay i need to okay you know mom watch my kid for a bit and i'm gonna go do the work for a day and come back okay. no but like we're already in a different remote location everything is different like it, it's just a lot of layers that people don't get to see and understand about our lives that it's very complex but I, I saw myself in this position of, you know, um, I have a, a baby and they're telling me to go over there. I can't leave my family. So I was like, you know, and also it was me and my mom and I didn't have any help back then. So it was just me and my mom doing the business and taking care of the three kids. Like it was me and my mom. That was it. And that was really starting to wear out in our relationship as mother and daughter as well. So I said, you know what, I'm going to step out of the handbag company. And you take it. She's still doing it. So, guys, if you like handmade handbags, my mom is doing it in a smaller scale than what we're doing, but she's still doing it. She's amazing. It's called Muxo, M-U-X-O. You can check it out. But um, she she continued doing it in a smaller scale. And then I just took a pause. And I said, I'm just going to be, you know, a mom for a while, for a bit. Like, I, you know, we we're blessed, a lot, we're blessed in our life that I have that choice of making that decision. The problem is I always worked my whole life. I've been working since I'm 14 years old. So it's like, you know, I just, I needed to have a different form of out for my, my own sanity. So I started doing this, going on TV shows. And I was like, well, what do I like to do? What do I love to do that is natural to me that doesn't really, uh, and this is the long version of the story, okay? No, I love it. Keep going. But, um, you know, I was like, you know, what do I love to do? Because I wasn't looking again. I wasn't looking into building a business. I was looking to, I just needed out for my own sanity as a, as a, as a working uh, woman that I just always worked my whole life. She's like, what do I, you know, I do that I, I, that I love that I can just, I was like, you know, I love helping people. And it's like, you know, like I love doing all this, the cooking and the kid stuff and the crafts. And I'm like, I'm the one doing it all of it. So I'm like, might as well just share. and. See, and I remember going the first time at the uh, Rachel Ray show, 
And that was my first time I ever did something like that. And, and it kind of like snowballed it's where then they want to be back constantly and then the Today Show and then The View and then like all the shows because I don't know. I don't know if it was the fact that I was just doing it for the pure joy of doing it. I didn't have at the end and buy this book or buy this, you know, this uh, pots and pans. You know what I mean? It was just me really going, this is what I do. And, and, and if it helped me. If it helped me, and maybe it'll help you. So that's kind of how this sharing of lifestyles started. And then we used to travel, as I was sharing earlier, that, you know, we would travel all over the world for my husband's work. And I'll get to different countries and different cultures. And even in the South in the United States, and I will feel how that community was bigger than many other places in the United States. I'm from Brazil. It's the same way. Like, you need something. You have been multiple conversations with different people to try to help and find a solution for your problems or things that you are trying to learn or things that you can't figure out. And I felt that when I would come back to a lot of places in the United States, that community was really small. Like, really, you had your, you know, your five friends or whatever that you talked about it. And then if they didn't know, if they didn't know how to help, and that was it. And I'll go talk to a psychiatrist or go talk to something like that. And I'm like, I don't like that. Like, what, you know what I mean? Why is it not a broader conversation of people with knowledge of different things? So really, Women of Today, it, it was just started with that mission of like, let's connect and learn from each other and pass that knowledge because we're kind of getting lost on it. We're kind of getting lost in this world of, yes, the internet has a lot of answers, but you don't really get that depth and that, you know what I mean, the knowledge in a way that used to be passed on, right? A personal. Um, exactly, that personal connection and that personal experience. Hey, you know yeah. what? Yes, that did work, but let me tell you something. When I did that that way, I did get a hiccup with this mess, so watch out for that or do that, you know what I mean? Like whatever that is. So really that's the main basis of Women of Today. That's why I kind of had that idea of starting. When I first started, it was never meant to be a thing. It was, again, it was me going, let me just put it out there, let me share and see where it goes, you know? And then I started doing Yummy Spoonfuls with uh, the founder at the time. And that took over and that became like a whole, you know, building a business, growing a business. We went from, you know, she was doing in a small scale on a share kitchen to going nationwide, 33 products, 1500 stores all at once, um, you know, with a very small team, very little budget, having to figure out production and co-packers and all of that. So that kind of took over everything. And I put women of today on the side. So it was just kind of like, you know, like when I couldn't deal with anymore with like numbers and, you know, investors and, and spreadsheets and production facilities and da 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 inventories and all of that. I'll go to women today was my like, oh, okay, I don't have to, do, you know, it was just like this fun place to go to. And again, I was like, you know what? This is a cool thing. I'm going to keep doing it. I kind of kept it slowly, kept it alive into now it, it's kind of it's the main thing that i do oh that's so exciting and what do you think is the reason that it's grown into such a large community well it's a good question i ask i ask the people in the community all the time like we did a live thing yesterday and somebody came in and i was like what what, what do you see here because I'm, all, I'm always curious you know that you don't know what you gotta put it out if it's going to resonate it's going to work or not I think that really the fact that we have a mission to help people do better for themselves and do better for their community, it's a mission that most of us can relate to because we're all trying to do better in, 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 in a certain level, in a certain way or whatever that is, right? So, you know, we did, so during the pandemic, we you know, we started doing exercises on Instagram like five days a week and six days a week. And, you know, I've gotten letters and, and emails of people just saying, you, you know, I was having really dark thoughts. I was going through a really bad road. I thought I was going to do something to myself that was not positive. And the fact that I had you guys there five days a week, six days a week sometimes, that I knew that time, that day, um, 
I would get to connect and do something for myself. And, and, and this lady shared with us, she, she goes, you know, sometimes I would just like, I would be so depressed and I'll be in my bed and I, but I'll be like, Oh, you know, Camilla and March, you're going to be there. So let me just like, let me just put it on and have it in the background. And, and then I'll just be laying in bed. Like she wasn't even, she's like, I'm not going to do that. Any of the stuff I'm back to, you know, I'm just really sad and depressed now. And she go, and she said, and she goes, all of a sudden, without even realizing it, I was up on my feet doing the exercise with you guys and getting out of my depression state, you know, like without even realizing I was doing it. So it was a lot of those stories uh, that have been shared with us. We, a, lot, a lot of people that have met each other in the communities or on the events or through doing the workouts because, you know, we, we can see who's there and have now become friends and kept up with each other and help each other out in the way. So I think that people are just finding things that are really helping them going through, you know, we did the uh, sugar talk, which, you know, it's not a hot topic to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about, hey, don't tell me not to eat sugar. But it wasn't just about that. It was about bringing all these experts that come in from all different, you know, from chefs to doctors to nutritionists to, you know, the guy who knows all, everything on the labels. And also we're kind of teaching and sharing information that, Sometimes they're cuckoo and crazy. Like, you know, Marge sometimes will sit there and teach people. We did the Zoom and everybody's like learning how to scrape their tongues. And I'm like, and everybody looks crazy, but we all do it. Tongue exercises. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, you know, so we go from things like that to really, you know, doc, like doctors telling you about how your body works and all of that. So I think that the content and the information we're trying to share is so broad but always have the mission of getting you to do better for yourself. Uh, so I think that people are really just feeling that and catching on with that ability. And, and we, we have so many stories of people that go, you know, even if it was some, some people are like, listen, you know, I couldn't figure out my hair and you did this thing. And now I know how to do this with my hair. And that was a highlight for them. Some people go, I was struggling with depression and y'all help me get out of it. Some people are, you know, I never cooked. I never know how to cook. And now I can do this and I can afford and it's for my family. So it kind of goes in different aspects. And I always say, you know, when people come in into certain events or things, we go, I say, hey, if this is not for you, don't worry. Stick around because the next one might be, right? right. So I think the course is having those experiences. You've almost been like a friend to them during this time when we're so isolated from each other. Yeah, and I think that we, I think that we all have been friends for each other. To be right. honest, like you know, like I, I would have not taken as good care of myself if I wasn't doing what I was doing for the community. I just would have not. I would have, you know, I. I mean, before we did the, sh you know, like I, I had this idea of doing this this sugar talk because I was like, I am like eating, you know, I'm binge eating. I'm, I'm like, and I eating sweets like I'm not taking good care of myself and I could see my immune system come down starting gaining weight and I was like guys no like somebody else probably doing the same thing too like come up with something that can help everybody so I think we're all in the community like really felt like we we had each other's back if needed to you know what I mean mm -hmm. um I want to talk a little bit about just day-to-day -day life during the pandemic because I think we all kind of experienced this. It's been a chaotic year, as we've talked about before. Let's start with your mother-in-law is with you during during four yes. years. Yes, yes. What has that been like? Yeah, you know what? I I want to add one thing to my previous answer here, because one thing that is really important that I have seen in the women's day community is that again, when we talk about helping the community, their communities, and give back. In this time of everybody struggling, we are doing things where we don't tell them, oh, you have to pay this much. We tell them, if you can, if you can afford, and whatever amount that is. So we just did something the other day with this small group of people, and everybody donated whatever amount they, they could. Nobody had to share. It was private, privately done. And we were able to get, I think it was 10, I think it was 10,000 meals donated. For our Freedom Protect campaign, so they they feel like they're accomplishing something as well with helping 
I wanted to I wanted to add that out. Um, okay, my mother-in-law living with me. Um, look, I always knew it was coming at some point, um, but um, this this was fast and furious for sure. <laughs> Um, look, it's is it a is it a change on the dynamic of the household? Absolutely, I will be lying if I say that it isn't. Right? Absolutely, it is. You know, um, is it a change in the dynamic with you know what we do around the house and you know how we go about it? Yes, it is. Do we have to cater more to her needs? um yes absolutely she's 88 you know what i mean we we owe her that like you know like man when i get to that age i hope somebody does that for me you know um but it has been also a really big blessing for us it's been a blessing for all of us it's been a blessing for you know my kids look we always spend a lot of time with her we leave clothes together so you know she would come pretty much every weekend and spend you know thursday to monday with us or friday to monday if we're not on location. Um, so she says, oh, we always spend a lot of time with her, but now my kids have really get to spend a lot of time with her. Um, I have discovered a whole new relationship. Again, her and I were really close, but now it's like, you know, we have to get really deep with a lot of things. And she's a tough one. She's tough. She's not easy. What do you, you mean, know? for example? She's tough. She likes to start shit. Like she likes to, she likes to start trouble. She likes, you know, like she likes controversy. And in my household, we don't have a lot of controversy. Like when we get along, you know, if we disagree on something, we talk about it, we try to work it out, whatever. But you know, I mean, I don't know if anybody watching this, um, you know, is reading Matthew's book, Green Lights. Um, and he tells it in the book, you know what I mean? Like the fights and stuff that she would have, like she likes controversies, how she communicates in a way. And I don't like arguing controversy. I'm the opposite. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with that. I grew up with that. I don't want that in my household, you know? Uh, so she tries to start up shit and trouble and great, you know, she starts speaking on me, you know, and, and when she's, she's, she's diva, she definitely has a diva at it. An attitude about her and when she gets into those I a lot of times have to go oh I'm gonna go outside I'm gonna go into the other room but you know um, and take a breather here because you know we have to respect and and honestly I give her so much prop the fact that she she just you know we picked up our lives and had to change what we were doing she picked up her life at 88 which yeah. you know when you get to that age is very much about routine and knowing the environment and all of that. She picked up and changed everything that she's doing for it. It sounds like you're all learning how to how to adjust, right? Like everything about this year has been just like a, a humbling lesson in change and, and adjusting to things that you can't prepare for. I, um, I think the last question before I get into we have a number of questions from the audience. Um what sure, about can I just say something really good in terms of you say of changing, right? Something yeah. that we're all working on. But it's uh, another thing that I'm big on. I, I even have um, a thing that I wrote on the wall uh, for many years. I watched this documentary and it's Mother Nature. And it's about, you know, the fight between the crocodile and the hippo who wins. And it's not necessarily the strongest is the most adaptable to change. It is the most adaptable, adaptable to change. That's something I always talk to my kids about it. Yeah. So if you guys are watching, if you're thinking of your business, if you're thinking of your personal life, adaptation, we are all part of this, you know, we, if you watch Mother Nature, Mother Nature is always adapting. And us as human beings or even of projects or business, a lot of times you just get stuck in this one way. No, this is how I do things. No, this is who I am. No, this is what it is. We can be adaptable. As human beings, and also in the business, you have to be adaptable to be able to succeed. How have you and your children adapted to pooling this year? For instance? Like, what is what oh, is that for you guys? You know? Oh man, you guys, honestly, like I don't, I don't know how y'all are doing this stuff, but it is so hard for me, and I don't even know how the teachers are doing how the scores are handling. I literally, I got on a Zoom, uh, you know, meeting with the school, with the whole school, 
And I had to turn my video off because I was getting emotional. But just, you know, hearing from all the teachers and all of that, I was like, man, I, it's just so much. It really is. Um, but we're adapting it. You know, everybody's got their, their you know, they, they know what they have to do. Um, it's really hard for my daughter because she's, you know, she, the transition from fourth grade to fifth grade is a big transition in the school year. Mm -hmm. And usually you go through it with your teachers and they, hold your hand and you you know you learn all that and she's having to do it all online not only she's learning how to use the computer systems for the first time she's learning all those all that whole transition online which it gets you lose so much of the the experience and the journey and the, the holding the hand right um it's a lot i i'm not gonna lie it's 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 really really hard but we're finding ways i feel like it's funny because we're just before you know, we we're like, okay, we have, we have our, okay, we got our systems. Okay, I think we're good now. I think we understand what to do, how to go about, and all of it. And then, you know, it changes again. It changes again. So we had like multiple changes, you know, in this system. So um, I don't know what to tell you. It's just hard. Hard. My morning routine is printing math papers and sitting with it and then I have to call Matthew over at the end of the day when he's done because I'm like, hey, this is way above my pay grade. I don't, you know, I didn't finish school. I didn't finish school. So I'm like, I don't, a lot of this, and it's a different language. Yeah. Right? So I'm like. Eh. Totally. I, I have <laughs> children. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old and my husband and I talk all the time about how we feel so grateful that they're not, they're not old enough to have their schooling really disrupted. Um, I, I feel so much empathy for everybody with school age children who are just trying to trying to do the best they can right now. Yeah, and the emotional that goes on the kids, you know what I mean? Like so for instance for us to be harder because the school went back into doing on campus, right? Um, and again, they don't know if they've been to continue, but we don't know what right what the next day shows, but they went back on doing on campus. But because we have uh, you know, mom and I, we have high risk in the household. So it's not an option for my kids to go back to school in person. It just isn't until we really figure more of, you know, how to go about this COVID situation. Um, so emotionally, that has been really hard because they get in and they're seeing all, you know, they're seeing their friends together that are out for, in class and all of that. You know, it, it's big concepts. It's so many big concepts that the kids have to grasp right now that usually you know it's in an older stage not when you seven and ten years old yeah absolutely so quickly a few questions from our audience um so many people who are just such huge fans um a woman named margaret Newland from the university of southern california she wants to know what is one piece of advice you wish you knew when you were younger oh to start earlier what does that mean? So when I was, you know, even when I was 15, when I was 19 years old, I remember I wanted to do coconut water. I found the, you know, I found the suppliers. I found it. Pro Becker, how to bring it from Brazil here because we grew up doing coconut water, right? Uh, um, I didn't do it. I didn't push it. Right? I didn't push it as hard as I needed to. I had another idea, like, hey, look what coconut water business is now, right? But, like, just the fact that when you are younger, if you have the urge of doing a business and you're very clear on what you want to do, charge it. Go for it. You know, like, you have so much more uh, energy, time. You have so uh, much less to lose when you are younger in terms of, versus when you have a family and when you have kids, because then it's a whole, you can still do it. I, we're doing it, right? You're doing it, I'm doing it. Like you can still do it, but it is so much more complex. <laughs> it is so much harder. So I think that for me was really like, you know, once I like finally had, you know, the handbag business, I finally had, you know, anyway, different things that I did, I'm going like, oh man, I, you know, like I really should have charged on passions and missions that I have more when I was younger because it would have been a different experience and a different way to go about it for sure. And another thing is that, you know, when a door closes, you know, when you get no, when you get no 
and it took me a minute to understand this because you know if something didn't work business-wise for me or an idea didn't work or something I'll, I'll devastate it I'll be just sad you know and then I go oh, now what you know that kind of stuff and, and in the beginning I come from very humble beginnings so that meant when something didn't work it meant a lot like it meant like okay let's go back to waiting tables and you know, work in restaurants and let's figure out, save up a little bit more and try this way or that way. So what I didn't understand back then was that really the nose that we get, it's either really, and you have to be in touch with your intuition and yourself to understand the difference. They're either the nose are either telling you, Hey, I'm testing. You need to push it. You need to keep pushing that way. Or it's saying, you need to go around and change the course of, of to something else. There's two ways, and you have to really be in touch with your intuition to understand what that no is telling you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I had a call yesterday. Can I share this story? I had a call yesterday with somebody that um, it's a major investor, a major investor, and we're, we're talking, we did a charity thing, and we're working doing a charity thing. And when we were uh, working on yummy spoonfuls and lunch yummy spoonfuls was really really hard that was one of the, i would say that was the one of the hardest thing business wise i ever done um and i was just reaching out for help left and right on guidance just guidance i'm like i need guidance i don't know anything about this food business and i talked to this guy and i don't remember our conversation so last night we were having this talk and i went i went wait we did talk when I was like, thank you for taking the time to talk to me back then. Cause this guy's like, you know, I was like over here and this guy's like over there and you know, in business, I was like, thank you so much for doing that. And he goes, Oh, you had to, you know, you waited up until now to tell me. I was like, what, what happened? What did I do? And he goes, you don't remember. I was like, no, I don't remember at all. He goes, I was like, listen, when you're in the woods, you know, trying to start a business, you're in the woods. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, and he goes, Oh no. You had it. We had a conversation for over an hour. He goes, I was in the parking lot of WME. And I remember exactly that at the end of the conversation, you went, I respect you because he was telling me no. He was telling me to not do something that in my gut, I was like, no. And I told him, I said, you know what? I respect you and I respect you what you have accomplished, but I don't agree with you. <laughs> and so he told you not to do something and then you did it anyway. I did it. I, I told, and I told him, I said, I respect you, but I don't agree with you. And we did it. And the business is there. We did the business. We accomplished the business there. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a long story with that business. This is the best story business. No, but it's there. It's a life. It's, you know, we accomplished. Basically, he was telling me not to accomplish something that we ended up accomplishing. Um, so again, understanding the no's because sometimes, you know what I mean? You, you hear no's from different angles, understanding what that means to you. In putting them in context, anyway. Yes. Yeah, totally. I um, love that. Um, so here's another question from uh, somebody whose username is at Colnax B. How, does, how do you teach your culture? How do you, how do you teach your children about your culture? And, and do they enjoy learning about your roots? So I think the number way, the number one way to um, teach kids is by example is what you do. They're watching, they're watching all the time. And I feel like for me, in terms of my culture, bringing in my culture in, it's very important because I'm the only Brazilian in the house. You know, my mom used to live with us when it was just me and my mom doing, you know, how the kids and the business and all. Then that was easier, you know, because we talked Portuguese all the time. We had Brazilian music playing all the time. We had the da da no, we don't have that, right? So, like, for, you know, I really make sure it's food. So I have created a relationship where my kids feel like their comfort food is Brazilian food. So that, that's like, you know, like, they like, oh, you know, okay, the rice and beans and this and the stroganoffi and the bunch of queijo. And so I always have, I always have a pot of beans in the stove, you know? Um, so the food, the music, um, soccer. They've become soccer lovers and soccer fans. Um, and it's just, again, instead of trying to force it on them, just kind of, you know, put it in there. Like, you know, when, you know, when we take drives, I'll put Brazilian music and I'll start, you know, doing things. Like, through the pandemic, we had to, 
you know, find ways to exercise and stuff and, and be active, I'm like, I'll find the Brazilian uh, dance teacher videos and we do that. And they would crack up because, you know, we're both the hips in different ways and do different things. And they're like, I can't. I was like, yes, you can. Come on. You know, it became a whole kind of fun. These are just finding ways that are natural to, to them. So it's fun and they feel like they're a part of it instead of being put on them. Um, and the only thing that I do push on them is to learn Portuguese, which a lot of times they don't, they don't want to take that class. But it's like, no, you have to because my, my father doesn't speak English. You know what I mean? So they have to learn some of that. So it's actually my mom's idea to do the class with her. So see, she's the teacher. <laughs> oh, so that's... That's going great. They Zoom, you know, they do the WhatsApp and, and put it on the screen. And, um, and she teaches them Portuguese and she makes it fun. They get to spend time together. They talk. You know, it's also a way for them to connect. So, but food, music, and sports has been a big, a big way to get the culture. I love it. I love it. Well, I have like a million other questions that I could ask you, but we're out of time. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time and your openness here. Um, and you're doing great um, during the during these very difficult times. Um, is well, there I'll try. Do you want to add that you think that we haven't touched on that you think that the audience should know? Um, no, I mean, I don't think so. You know, I think that, again, just adaptation, guys. You know, adaptation. We're, we're, we're all being tested to our limits. And I think that have adaptation, adaptation with yourself as a person, with your family, with your community, and with your business. And if you can find adaptations that do not go away from your core mission and your core purpose, you should be okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me.